For this demo, I'm going to show you how to use the Hobby Loom by Preciosa. Um, so we it, co it comes in sections. Uh, you get all the pieces for the loom. You get some thread. Um, you get uh, one, two, three, four, five different colours of beads. And you get your long loom needle. Lovely little kit. Great for getting started with looming. Um, well, and you, and you can use it anyway. So you've got your two um, ends. Now the they've got um, grooves in the top. This is where your uh, warp threads are going to go. And then you've got two large holes. So you can't put this together the wrong way it, 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 because of where the, the holes are. So taking your dowels, you're going to just feed those into the ends as so. Okay. Then you've got the the end pegs, and again they can't go wrong because they only fit in one. So you've got the pegs with the slits won't go in there because they're 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 different diameters. So you're going to pop those end pegs without the slits in there, and then we're going to turn it round and pop the ones with the slits in this side. Now you want the slits to be horizontal because your rod you're going to pop into make sure that both there we go into there okay so this is where you're going to wrap your thread round so we're going to start off by tying and I've got a piece of thread over here we're going to start off by tying the end around your flat part and we're going to I'm just going to do couple of overhand knots just to secure that in place like so and then we're going to slide that along if you make sure the knots at the bottom it will mean it won't pop through later then you're going to feed your thread through the groove across to the other side and then around your peg and back up. Now I go over the top of the peg, so you're going to the outside because you're coming further over when you come back. I don't, I don't think it makes any difference anyway. Pop it into the next one going towards the middle. Get that tension. Go across to the other side. I pop my thread through underneath, but I'm holding it there to keep that tension and then when you've got hold of it through the other side you can pull it up holding that tension take it back down and you can do this for as many threads as you like up to the full width obviously bear in mind for the number of beads you want you want one more warp thread so these are your warp threads you want one more thread because the beads sit in the gap so we'll pop that to one side and pull one that we've got started <clears throat> so I've got eight threads uh, eight beads so I've got nine threads set up on this and to start all you do I would say get a, a depends how how well you can cope with your thread and this is just beading thread you do get some nylon thread in the kit but it's so fine you can't see it so um, I've used a, a black um, fire line and what you're doing is you're just tying a knot. So if I use the other end of this, you literally just go through one of your warps. Now it doesn't matter whether you go left to right or right to left. So whichever is your dominant hand and just tie a couple of knots in there, leaving about a five, six inch tail um, so you can sew it in afterwards. Okay, so once you've got then you're going to weave and I'm going to move these over here just throw some beads out so these are the colors you're getting in the kit and I've just done a simple zigzag pattern so I'm going to put two white on so now bear in mind I'm putting eight beads on two reds two yellows and two greens and that's my eight so each time I'm moving the colors one to the left until I get to the white at the top and then I'll go back the other way. Slide them underneath and pull them down 
until they get to the bottom and then you're going to put them through the um, warp threads. Now bear in mind you're going to put the thread over so they go underneath to begin with under the thread. This thread's now stopping them coming straight through. You're then going to take your needle and pass your needle back through over the warp threads. So you're going to make sure and that's why I've got my finger underneath pushing those beads up to stop them. Now I'll, I'll show you what happens if you miss it. It's not the end of the world if you miss it. So that's now secured them because you've got a thread going underneath around the thread at the end so it won't pull through. I'll pull that tight. Going over the top. So I'll just show you what goes on if you miss it. So we're going to have two reds, two yellows, two greens. Whoops, they're blue two greens and the blue and you can do such lovely patterns um, with five colours but you can use different bead shapes with it um, and it'll work just as well so I'm going to pull those through and I'm going to show you what happens if you miss them and how to correct it so I'm just going to pull those through there you're going to feed back through okay and pick up those back through there we go now so I've, I've I've deliberately missed some of those and you'll see which ones I've missed because if I push can you see how these beads have all dropped down let me put my needle through so you can see these beads are not actually secure these are secure if you do find that happens and you, it doesn't matter if you notice afterwards because this they're going to sit there okay so if you do find it happens just thread your needle back to that row and thread it back through. I don't know whether I caught that last one in there. And then you've secured them and then they can't go anywhere. So I'm going to carry on then till you've got the required length. So I'm going to put seed beads everywhere. Pop that over there out of the way. And then when you take it off, so basically you just pull the pegs out release the tension from both sides and then that's got your piece of um, be, uh, beaded loom work I'm just going to put that needle there and you end up with these threads at either side now what I've done here is I've gently eased those through so holding this end I've eased them through so that that side is now the threads are pulled down between there but because of the threads going across um, they won't go anywhere so I can use that to just fit and it's it's kind of going to depend on what um, fastening you're going to use where you're going to use these you can get special um, clasps and you basically feed that through the end which end is it there we go. There we go. So you've got clasps that you feed through like that. I think this is designed for an 11. There we go. But you get the idea of how you can feed that through. Or you can add, you can do a little bit of brick stitch going to a point, um, in which case you can add different clasps. You've got clasps with loops obviously a smaller one than this, that you would just loop into there and finish it off. So all these different means, but what you can also do, if you were going to add this, say, to um, a piece of fabric, or if you were going to add to a shoe or something, then you can put masking tape on all of these, both sides, stick it together and then trim, and that will hold those in place, and you can tuck that underneath and finish it that way. So there are a host of different ways you can finish your your threads off. Now bear in mind that the length of that, um, which is enough to make a seven inch bracelet, including the cl clasp, um, you, you're not going to do it all in one thread. So if you want to join a thread in, as you did with the start, you're just going to knot, if I pull this one back in here, I know it's not going to be tensioned now. So say we finish this thread here, weave back through three or four rows and come back round and then that will secure that thread and then just knot as we did with the start 
your next piece of thread in and then carry on and then just weave those ends through and that will finish that off so enjoy your weaving <laughs>